Now, AI isn't only reshaping how we travel or work, it's reshaping how life begins. Israeli company AIVF uses AI to help doctors evaluate embryos during IVF treatment. But when algorithms begin ranking potential life, where do we draw the line? So for more, I'm now joined by Daniela Gilboa, co-founder and CEO of AIVF. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Um, so first of all, let's start from the beginning, because what is exactly the, the, the edge that you have over traditional IVF? So traditional IVF means we um, evaluate embryos based on subjective human analysis. So under a microscope or on, um, on a computer, but we actually count cells, try to evaluate it based on our embryology, biology knowledge. What we do is we apply AI to evaluate embryos. So instead of having subjective human analysis, we can actually tell you what are the probability, what is the probability for every embryo, for each embryo, to become a successful pregnancy. And how do you compare it to, like you just told me, the success rate? So what, can you explain to us what, what yeah, the success so, rate so, is? Exactly. So we increase success rates or pregnancy rates by up to 20%, which is you know, very significant. And if you look at it from the patient side, we reduce time to pregnancy. So according to CDC, it's about three to four cycles until success because IVF today is not, uh, is not optimized. So it takes you about three to four cycles until pregnancy. And if you follow AIVF recommendations based on our software, then it takes you 1.6 cycles on average. This is significant. And when you want to talk about democratizing IVF and maybe even uh, less money to pregnancy, this is um, an incredible solution. And not only it operates here in Israel, but also ro worldwide. Right. Because primarily for, I, I just told everyone that IVF here is subsidized, but in a lot of exactly. countries it isn't, and it's right. very expensive. Right, right. exactly. So where we uh, so let's talk about ethics for a second because your uh, AI it doesn't choose embryos but it exactly. ranks them. Right. So uh, ethically, at what point does ranking become selection? Well, you talk about um, embryo selection when you do IVF, but embryo selection without any AI solutions or without any tech, so it's it's done by the the medical staff or the embryologists um, in the lab. Um, so we're not. The AIVF or any other tech solution is not selecting embryos. It just empowers the physicians or the embryologists to make more informed decisions. So again, instead of a guesstimation kind of process, you have something that's much more data-driven and, and accurate. So you know um, exactly which embryo has the highest potential to succeed or to implant. Um, and you can actually, you have a number. So instead of saying, uh, we think this is the one, or this, that's the one, like now you have, it's an accurate number. You could say, you have, with this embryo, there's like about 90% chance of you becoming uh, pregnant, or um, there's an 85% chance that the embryo is genetically normal or abnormal. So all of this yes. with AI mm -hmm. that's, that's trained on, you know, massive data, so it must be better than any human being because of the data that it was trained. And it's not you're you're not selecting based we're not on selecting. any exactly we're traits. Just, exactly we're just no we're not selecting traits. It's just just helping the embryologist make more informed decision as to which embryo uh, they choose to transfer back to the uterus. That's the million dollar question in IVF: which embryo becomes a baby? And you yeah. have you don't have one embryo. Like optimization in IVF, it's not having one embryo; it's having maybe five, six, ten. So which so which one? This is this is the the, the question that the million dollar question. What we're trying to do is help you, you know, get to this get one the, and, the, and, the and say like exactly say like choose this over this, but but do it in a more informed way. This is one, one aspect. The other aspect is, of course, the patient. Can we really um, help the patient understand the process, uh, be more, you know, transparency here? Just imagine that you can log into your, you know, um, iPhone and see your embryos and log into the lab, see your embryos 24-7, really understand the process, be part of this really amazing, you know, um, uh, process that's called IVF. We think this is the way to do it in 2025 is like, yeah. yeah. But your, your product is still very much, it's, it's, a, 
it's a support system for the doctors, exactly. for humans. Exactly. So where do you see, because I can imagine that a lot of viewers back home also think that, oh, this can go wrong very quickly if we give the power to, to AI, for instance, when it comes to eye color, height, whatever. Right. And, and this, this is a discussion that's now, you know, that's going on. We don't touch it. We don't do any traits. Um, we only do um, probability of success. And this is the question that's, that's being asked today in IVF. Um, and yes, there are different solutions for There are different aspects of, it's called polygenic scoring. We don't touch it. It's right now, you know, a very kind of like grayish zone. Uh, but it's, I think, something that us as a community will have to discuss in the coming years. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out. I agree. Uh, Danielle Gaboa, co-founder and CEO of AIVF. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you.